appreciate everyone being here today. What a wonderful afternoon and uh, lead up to a game that we've got to, to bring these guys back on campus. Uh, all the basketball players, coaches, and staff of that group. Um, what most people, a lot of people have asked me, did, did everybody make it back? Is everyone come? I mean, really, there's, there's only a, two or three players from that era who did not make it back to Buffalo because some had family issues that they had to deal with. So we appreciate that very much. I mean, it's a wonderful time for you, but for our Canisius community, we appreciate your time in, in coming back to Buffalo. My thanks to John Maddock, who, who we all know very well. John's worked at Canisius for over 30 years, uh, was a sports information director during that time, uh, and was, was a part of the travel party, as I say. But John was someone who was instrumental in putting this event together and bringing everybody back together, making the phone calls, getting the emails gone. So John, to my, to, uh, on behalf of everybody, thank you very much for that. John mentioned it in the, the, the event we had last night, or the, the team had last night. Whenever you bring a group of guys back together or a team back together, it's like yesterday. I know we, we've had different events, and being a football player here, we've gotten the football team back together. And, and talking to the basketball guys and listening to what they had to say about their events last night, just seeing people, you pick up right where you left off. You understand your, the shared memories and, and how quickly you can go right back to the time that you spent together, whether it was on campus on a road trip or uh, during games or contests. And those are the memories that really make the student athlete experience wonderful. Um, it was a fantastic run. You know, what a special run it was. Uh, the, the, the accolades are pretty clear. A sweet 16-game win streak, a MAC regular season championship, two NIT appearances, and, of course, the MAC championship and an NCAA appearance. Those were all the things that the team accomplished, and they did it together. But everyone has their own special memory. John talked about Mike Harrington's letter. Then there was Jerry Sullivan's article in, in the paper this morning. And that just gives you a sense of how everybody in Buffalo, how everybody on campus has a feeling or a special memory. And I think all of us could pick out a special memory of that time. And I would say, for me, one of the special memories that I had, and I think it's shared by many in listening to what's been written about it, is the Washington State game. And I would think back to why is that. And really, it's because everybody in Buffalo, everybody in the Canisius community <clears throat> got to celebrate and experience that with the team. The team was on the road for a lot of those wins. They did a lot of things that we're all very proud of, but that was one we were all able to take part in. And I think it's forever going to be a memory that we're all very, very proud of. That NIT run also culminated with my initiation into uh, Canisius history in, in a unique way. Doc Starr didn't tell me this when I went down. I was the compliance guy who ended up being the ticket manager. And everybody who I come to find out now at that, during that era, everybody had to room with Father Dugan at one point on the road. <laughs> that, was my, that was my time to room with Dukes. So I had a, my assistant ticket manager was Dukes, Times Square, the Marriott Marquis, and Dukes is a roommate. So thanks for that, fellas. Appreciate it. That three-year run still shines brightly on Canisius in our men's basketball program. Wonderful thing about athletics is we get to look back and celebrate history as we chase our next championship. And the things that happen on campuses, it's an ongoing thing. The college is always developing and working to move forward. And one of the, the next person I'd like to bring up is a person who's been instrumental in moving us forward, moving Canisius College forward, and moving our athletic program forward, our president, John Hurley. Thanks very much, Bill, and uh, welcome to everyone here today. This is a, a great turnout in, in support of Canisius College basketball and particularly our great teams, 1993 through 1996. Um, I'd like to, to, to extend a special welcome to uh, Coach John Beeline, Kathleen, your family, um, and thank you for, for coming back and, and making this a priority in your schedule at a at what we know is a very busy time of the year in, uh, in college basketball. Um, you know, I think, John, you, you've, in, in many ways, you set a standard uh, for Canisius College basketball that we've been looking at and we've been, we've been striving toward. And I think um, under Coach Jim Barron and his staff, I think we're going to get there. But it's a, a standard of excellence in this Metro Atlantic conference. Uh, I, I, was, uh, I was amazed in reading that story this morning by Jerry Sullivan. Not too much has changed in the Metro Atlantic, except that it's gotten more competitive. We're still beating each other's brains out every day when we get on the court. It's, uh, it's a very competitive conference, but I, I think it's the place to be for Canisius College basketball. And what we want to do is we want to be consistently competitive in that conference and, um, and, and take it to those guys. And you showed us how that can be done here. So thank you. And, 
you know, John, the, the, um, since you've left, um, I think it's fair to say, I don't think there's a person in this room who's ever forgotten you, and there's not a person in this room who doesn't root for you every time they see Michigan or West Virginia or Richmond even, when you were at Richmond, uh, in a big game. We're all pulling for you. And I think you've reciprocated. You've never forgotten Canisius. You've always been just a phone call away for Bill, for me, for some of the coaches here, for some of the student athletes. And um, it's great to know that Canisius occupies a very special place in your life. And we're, and we're very, very grateful for that. So thank you. Thank you for coming back. For the members of the team, uh, you know, the coach set the standard. The coach did the coaching. You guys did the playing. And what a great set of memories you have from those years. So thanks for, for making the time and the, uh, and the effort to get back here and to bind, uh, bond together as a team and remember those great experiences. Canisius is going to be great, and um, you guys are a part of that tradition, and, uh, and we're happy to have you back here on campus today. So thanks very much. Celebrations like this are really an opportunity, opportunity to say thank you, to welcome everybody home, uh, and, and I'd be remiss if I didn't take a moment to thank a group of people who were part of Canisius before this great run that we had, during that run, and of course afterwards. And that's, that's our season ticket holders, Cage Club folks, and, and what's really now our Blue and Gold Fund members who are here with us today. They've supported us throughout that period of time, and, and we continue to, to have their support, so we thank you for being here. You know, John's impact on this group is, is unique, and it's very clear to everyone. Um, and it's still being felt today in, the, in all of their families. And, and when you talk to those people, I see them in the community, they talk about that run and, and the impact that the coaching staff had on them. Um, John's helped us in a few other ways as well. Uh, I got a phone call from someone who couldn't be here, uh, Joe Michael, who's a, a good friend of our program. And, and Joe had said, uh, I think they used to be neighbors with, with John and Kathleen. And um, Joe was, was someone who came to us about uh, eight or 10 years ago and said, you know, I really need to, really want to try and help move some things forward. And John Beeline put a bug in his ear uh, after he'd left about the need to, to get a group of people together to help raise funds for Canisius College, for Canisius basketball. And that's what that has grown into today is our coaches circle. And uh, many of those coaches circle members are here. Uh, Joe couldn't be here, but he's still a member with uh, Carl Montante who started that. So we appreciate that, John, because not only have you lived on in, in these guys, but you've also um, helped us out in some other ways and letting other people know what's, uh, what needs to be done to have a program that we all want to be proud of. Um, it's my pleasure to, to introduce someone who really needs no introduction. Um, he led Canisius to 89 wins in some of the most memorable seasons in Canisius history. A friend of our program, as John Hurley said, always willing to take a phone call, lend, lend support or lend information anytime he can. One of the best basketball coaches in the country and someone who Buffalo will always consider one of their own, John Beeline. Uh, that video, whoever did that video, that's great. And uh, it's, I really appreciate uh, everybody's work to put this together. Uh, John called, uh, John Maddock called this summer and emailed me this, this year about this. And I th thank him and Fred and Bill and President Hurley for allowing these young men to come back. Uh, it, it was it's terrific. I thank my family for all coming in here. That was um, a great opportunity for Kathleen and I, Pat, Pat, or Patrick and Mark are with me now, to come back home from Syracuse and coach at a, at a great, great university. Uh, but I think that allowed us to come home and, and we increased the size of the odd crowds in Kesserside just from the family I come from. That was a big part. And uh, so that was terrific. Um, I always, I'm very grateful. i have be very grateful to Father Dembski uh, and to uh, Dan Starr, Tom Miller, who to hire a Division II guy, right? And we were 15 and 12, I think, my last year at Lemoyne. We weren't exactly killing it. And uh, to hire a, a Division II guy to be the head coach at, at Canisius was, was really uh, uh, something that was very bold, took a lot of courage. And I'm sure they had some moments when they were thinking, what the heck is he doing? As, as I found out last night, as we had a, a few beverages and we talked about those teams, uh, I found out a lot more what was happening behind the scenes that, that really made us special. Uh, but it was, it was uh, the cage club, the support we had, yeah, was, was as good as it can get at this, at this level. It's just you have the Bills, you have the Sabres, you have so many other things. And I, but I never felt like we didn't have support behind us. Uh, truth is, I had assistant coaches 
that were as good as it gets. I didn't even, when I first, I didn't have an assistant coach at Lemoyne, so I didn't know what they did. I asked them, what do you guys do all day? <laughs> and they showed me what they did all day, but the impact that they had, uh, Dave Now and Kevin Broderick, right, who came, both of them shared that position as they went on to bigger and better things. And then uh, Mike McDonald and Phil Seymour. I mean, the things that they helped me with about managing a team like this, uh, well, it's, it's never been going to be forgotten. It was incredible that we were able to manage all these things and grow this team uh, through, uh, through a lot of ups and downs as we, as we went through this journey, which is really what was, this was about. So without the assistant coaches, none, nobody's probably here. Uh, I, I wore the uh, 96 ring today. <laughs> And uh, thanks for the applause, I, I needed that. But it's like, see, Michigan is like, um, the thing is, the, the, we're the leaders in the best, the champions of the West. We talk about champions and champions. And it, while this 96 ring is so important, it wasn't just about this year. And we're, we're really celebrating a three years here. To me, I'm celebrating a five year, because you can't have those three years if you don't have year one, and you don't have year five that showed how it was done. Because really, those years were every bit as important to, to, to Michigan. Uh, for us to go in that first year and uh, have some moments, I told the story last night, and it's so um, crazy how it all turned out. We went to Duke in our first game. Our first game was against the national champion, Duke. I didn't know we had a budget, even, to buy sweatsuits for the road. So, Billy, you probably had a better budget than I had at that time at Niagara Community College. And we, we went in to play Niagara, we went in to play Duke, and they were the defending champion, and we had like our winter coats on. And guys were sort of walking in there, whatever they had, to go and practice. And the, the Duke was in Krzyzewskiville. They were all set up in Krzyzewskiville, and they said, what are you guys, the tennis team? They thought we were the tennis team. And then I said, well, what are you guys doing here? You're getting, you're having, you're sleeping overnight for the Canisius game? And they said, hell no. We got the University of Michigan coming in here Saturday. We're sleeping over for that game against the Fab Five. And we, uh, from that point on, we had moments during that season that these young men, that this is really all about, these are the champions. They were champions that first year, just like the 96 team. They were champions of sticking with this coaching staff, sticking with each other, listening to the elders Binky, right? They got the elders on the team that were saying, we're all in. Even though, it, you know, we go through, Darryl, we're, we're going to win. Mike Meeks gets eligible, Darryl, and, and we're going to win. And then all of a sudden, Daryl Barley is lost for the season. And it was, as, as it was all part of this thing. The next year, as you saw, the, the, the next year. Now, we, we won a championship. They were champions again. You just, Jim Barron's one of the greatest coaches in the country. Uh, and, and, and there's so many coaches. Ask how many of them won 16 in a row to close out a season. Just go ask anybody. How many teams win 16 in a row? That MAC championship in the regular season, those guys are champions. The following year, we are, like I said, we start off, and we're, we're, they're picked Penn, they picked us to play Penn and Syracuse to play George Washington because they wanted two top 20 teams to play each other, Penn and Syracuse, in the Carrier Dome for ESPN. And little did they know, we're sitting on the bus after we beat Penn and watching Craig Wise and Mike Meeks and Javon Moore now as the starting point guard playing at Penn. And we're, we're, we beat them. And George Washington beats Syracuse. And ESPN doesn't know what to do. <laughs> but where are we going to put this game? We sat on the bus. Well, where are we going? Are we going back to Buffalo or are we going to George Washington? And they sent us to George Washington. That's the way we started, and you win all those games with Cincinnati and all these, these teams. And then you go to the NIT championship. You go into the final four of the NIT championship. They were champions of just persevering. I, I, we, we had a three-game losing streak in that, in that season. We lost at home to St. Peter's, at home to Manhattan, and we lost on the road to Siena. It's like a steel trap here. The losses, I never forget those son of a bitches, ever. <laughs> Excuse me, Father, there's probably a priest in here. I'm sorry. 
And we go to Loyola, we cannot make a basket. And it probably was Mike McDowell or Phil Seymour says, why don't we just get the ball? Javon has been playing great. Mike's been playing great. Daryl's been playing great, but not in this game. And they say, coach, just get the ball to Craig Wise and tell everybody else to get the hell out of the way. <laughs> sort of the way, what you used to have to do with Tony Masiello, right? Just get Dennis Misco the hell out of the way and let Tony go to work, right? <laughs> and all of a sudden we win, and the next thing you know, right, we're just throwing the ball into Mike Meeks at Manhattan and we're beating them at their place. And Mike's, Mike's just give it to the big fella and let him go to work in front of Mayor Giuliano in a packed house and we're beating them. And, and no, we didn't get, we didn't win the MAC tournament. I probably messed it up again, but we were, we were in the NIT championship. And then the following year, man, we're gonna, we're gonna, we, we got a lot of guys back. We're gonna miss Craig, we're gonna miss Damone. We're gonna miss some really good players. Chris Young decided not to come back, and that was, he was a big factor in those runs. And I, I'm sorry if I miss anybody. I, I don't mean to do that. And we are, uh, uh, it, it looks like we're gonna have a good year, and we're, we're, we're gonna win this thing. We're gonna win another regular season championship, and, and Darryl goes down, and we lose three out of four. And uh, I've never been lower for a tournament, ever, thinking, oh, this, is, this can't be happening again. And I saw these guys, just put together a run in that tournament that uh, I think people said it was ugly. It was one of the prettiest three days of, of our lives, right? And even, even in the last year, I mean, you just look at any history of any teams in the MAC, how many times they've been in the championship game. Those guys started out one in five, one in six, and went to the championship game of the MAC with, with, with guys just emerging from all over the place on that team. So they were champions every year that I coached them because of their attitude. And I found out last night why. There was a foundation built in those first two years that was really incredible. And, and, and it's one that we embrace now at Michigan and West Virginia, wherever I've been, we build it, we build it. I wasn't smart enough to know what was happening behind the scenes. So I, I'm done, but what I found out last night besides some other things that happened during those years that I won't mention right now. I never did subscribe to that magazine, all right, that was delivered to my house. Somebody else did that. And they're gonna pay one day for that. But I found out what, what the foundation that was built from a young man that didn't get one of these rings, did get a MAC championship, and what he had on the team. So I'm gonna to want to close this with Binky Johnson, right? <laughs> Just a really good player. Come on, Binky. Thank you, say a few words. All right, I'll say a few words, thanks. First of all, as we, like Coach uh, Beeline said, we had to thank everyone that made this possible. Uh, Kanisha's, the athletic department, Coach Dupree, uh, John Maddock. Just a couple of gentlemen appeared. Last night we did what we call a gathering and we shared a lot of information. And a few gentlemen were missing. Coaches in the back just came in, Phil Seymour and Coach Nolan. Can we clap it up for them guys? Okay. Can't be on time, Coach Seymour, be what? If you're not gonna be on time, be what? Early. Be early. Anyway, <laughs> um, last night was a good opportunity for us as a uh, teammates, former teammates, 20 years have passed. I can't believe, past 20 years for me. Um, a lot of you here at the Cage Club, when I came here in 1990, it was the dog days of Canisius basketball. Sure, we all can remember those days. Uh, we were afterthought. I think one thing that was important that I talked to a couple players about was the timing when we started developing and be good. Um, first of all, the timing of Coach Beeline coming along and um, putting his blueprint on Kanisha's basketball with number one. But in the meantime, the Bills had went to three straight Super Bowl, four straight, and they had lost that fourth year. And we went into this win streak of 15, 16 in a row, and I think that timing in Canisius basketball all occurred at the same time, 
And therefore, you know, everyone loves a winner, Bills had lost, and then we started winning. Um, so timing in life, everyone knows how that is. Right place, right time, some special things happen. And that was part of um, what happened here at Kenesha's Basketball. Um, last night, I also wanted to touch on the fact that it was a time of thanks. So many thankful thoughts went out throughout these gentlemen here um, that we went to war with over, it was only like one or two years with you guys, but it's a lasting impression, lifelong uh, journey and experience and bonding that we all created. And um, last but not least, the coaching staff, Coach, obviously Coach Beeline, Coach McDonald who's not here, we stopped and saw his uh, practice yesterday, a lot of gentlemen did. Uh, Coach Seymour and Coach Nylon. Um, people ask me all the time, what's it like playing for these coaches, especially Coach Beeline? I said, it goes beyond basketball, honestly. It's, it's preparing you for life. We were uh, touching on some things last night. Um, one of the main character traits that Coach Beeline and coaching staff instilled in me as a person, a young man, a young black man um, from where I'm from, was building my character. And it was the five Ps in life. I touched on these last night. Um, the five Ps that they instilled in me um, my junior year was proper preparation prevents poor performance. And those five Ps carry with me to this day to life journey, to my kids, family, my friends, anyone I come in touch with. Because what preparation does, and this is before analytics, right, Craig, Damone, Mike Meeks, this guy was analytically telling us stuff 20 years ago that they're doing now, okay? That's how far ahead Coach Beeline was with this. But preparation actually gives you confidence. And I felt like going into those games after Coach Beeline was here and his coaching staff, we were overly prepared, and that gave us the confidence to be successful. So if nothing else in life, um, I want to pass it on to you guys because what coach and staff passed on to me with Coach Beeline's lead was the five Ps in life, and it helped make me uh, successful in my journey so far, and I think it's doing pretty well with my family. So thank you very much, and thank the team. <laughs> Thanks, Binky, and, and thank you, everyone, for being here. I think that sums up what I, what one of the things that I enjoy most about my role at Canisius and having the opportunity to work with our student athletes is what they develop into as they become young men and women and how they represent our institution as they go out in our community and out in the world. Um, the guys in this room, the athletes in this room, were part of an era that set a tone, set an expectation of responsibility that we, all, we ask all of our athletes to follow. And I would say to all of you, thank you for your efforts on behalf of Canisius College. Don't be strangers. Make sure you come back. There's, we have, there's been Hall of Fame celebrations for a number of these guys that has brought them back in town. Uh, hopefully we recruit some of their kids, and they'll come back and help us win some championships as well. Uh, but love to have you guys back on campus. Appreciate what you did for our program. Appreciate everyone's time here today. Uh, again, looking forward to a wonderful game over in the Kessler Center. Uh, Griffin's Den will be open for everybody, but folks will mingle here. Enjoy the afternoon, and thank you, everyone, for coming.